Hi everybody, this is 3 3 quadratic functions. Um, you guys will see problems like this on your test and I'll ask you guys to show your work the way that we show it in the notes. So um, make sure you guys are doing the homework problems the same way so you get that practice. Okay, so the vertex form of a parabola, this should be something that is review for you guys. You should for sure have seen this in Algebra 2 last year. Looks like this. We say y minus k is equal to a times the quantity x minus h squared. Sometimes you might see it written this way instead with the k on the other side. And that's fine as well. Doesn't matter to me what side the k is on as long as you can keep track of the correct shift. So k controls the shift up and down. Um, when it's on the right hand side, like here, that means we're moving up k. The same thing goes for this. That is up k as well if it's sitting on the left. So as we get into this first example, you guys are going to make sure you do the homework problems like this example. Don't look at the book directions. The book directions differ just a little bit to how I want you guys to do this. So here's what we've got. We've got this equation and we want to find the given information. So the vertex, vertex form, axis of symmetry, the x and the y intercepts. And then I'm going to ask you guys to graph this. So let's do this first. Vertex form of the equation. This becomes really important when we start looking at rational functions in the next um, chapter. But we have to do completing the square here. In order to take um, an equation and get it into vertex form, we're going to complete the square. And the first step to doing that is getting everything with an x on one side, moving everything else to the other. So x is on one side everything else the other. So I'm going to keep 2x squared minus 8x, but I am going to move that minus y to the other side by adding y to both sides, and I'm going to subtract 10 from both sides. So I move that y and the constant to the other side so that I've only got things with x on the left. And then after that, before I can start completing the square, we need the coefficient of x squared to be 1. So in order for that to work, I need to factor a 2 out of every term on the left-hand side, and that's going to leave me with this, I'm going to leave a blank there because that's where we're going to leave space for completing the square. All right, so then I've got to complete the square. This is how we're going to get that vertex form with that x minus h squared term. And the way that we complete the square, if you forgot over the summer, is we take the value of b, we divide it by 2, and we square it. And that becomes the squared term. So negative 4 over 2, that's negative 2 squared. We're going to be adding 4 to both sides. Now, the tricky part is this. It looks like we added 4 when we completed the square, but technically, remember, we've got that 2 we pulled out of every term. So we're not actually adding just 4 to the left-hand side. We're adding 2 times 4. So I need to make sure that my equation stay, stays balanced. I need to make sure that I'm adding the correct number on the right hand side. So we're technically adding 8 to both sides, it just looks a little bit different because we factor that 2 out on the far left. After we've got this square completed, I can actually factor the inside um, of the left side of the equation in order to make it a perfect square. So we've got 2 as our coefficient here, and then x squared minus 4x plus 4, that simplifies to x minus 2 squared. And then this is equal to y minus 2. That minus 8 and that uh, minus 10 and plus 8 simplify. And that's our vertex form. So I'm going to write that up here. Our vertex form is 2 times the quantity x minus 2 squared. And that is equal to y minus 2. Again, you could move that minus 2 to the other side. You could have it as plus 2 on the left. Um, however you prefer writing the equation, fine with me. Now the vertex is that value hk, so in vertex form, h is always on the inside with x, and then k is on the outside with y. So hk, our vertex here, is 2, 2. We're going to take the opposite of both of those signs in order to get the correct vertex. The axis of symmetry, then, is that line that divides the parabola in half. Um, this is an upward-facing parabola, so we need a vertical line. That is going to be the equation x is equal to, is what gives us the vertical line, and it's always just going to be the x-coordinate of our vertex. In this case, x is equal to 2. All right, so for the intercepts, the x and the y-intercepts, 
I like to graph things first and then go back to those. Sometimes the graph will give us the um, intercepts pretty easily and then we don't have to worry about solving. So let's graph this. I'm going to plot my x and y axes. Then I'll do this graph with you guys and then the other ones I'll have you pause the videos and try it on your own. Okay, so I'm going to plot the vertex first. The vertex is 2, 2. I'm going to scale by 1 on the x and the y axis in this example. So I'm just going to make a note of that. If you scale by 1, you don't actually need to mark the scale. So as long as you're scaling or counting by 1 on the axes, you don't actually need to note that. If you change the scale, that's when I need to see what, what you're counting by there. All right, the vertex is at 2, 2. Now, we have a stretch of 2. We get that stretch from looking at the number that x minus 2 squared is being multiplied by, or that value of a from vertex form. So because we have a stretch of 2, um, a standard upward-facing parabola would move right 1, up 1. With our stretch, we're going to move right 1, up 2. Standard-facing parabola is going to move right 2, up 4. With a stretch of 2, we're moving right 2, up 8. Five points is the minimum you need to graph a parabola. So if you have a parabola with less than five points on homework or test, I will take points off. So five points at least, that's enough. We're actually not going to be able to fit any more on there. So sketch in the curve. We've got all real numbers on our domain here, so we're going to make sure we include the arrows. And then the last thing, like I said, we want to come back to those intercepts. So from this graph, we can see that there are no x-intercepts. We don't actually cross the x-axis anywhere. And then we have one y-intercept, and conveniently, it's on the graph already, we can just count it, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 up on the y-axis. So our y-intercept here is 0, 10. In this next equation, same thing, we want to write the vertex form and then find the vertex axis symmetry and the intercepts. So let's do this one more time. We're going to take this equation, we're going to move everything that doesn't have an x um, to the right hand side. I'm going to keep everything that does have an x on the left. So x squared plus 6x stays on the left, and then we're going to move that 2y and that negative 5 to the right. And in order to do that, I'm going to subtract 2y's from both sides, and I'm going to add 5. I'm going to leave space on the left hand side so that we have a place to complete the square. Now to complete the square we're going to take that value of b which is 6 in this case we're going to divide it by 2 and we're going to square it. So we're adding 9 here. There was nothing, there's no coefficient I factored out on the left hand side so we're adding 9 on both sides this time. And then I'm just going to simplify. So that left hand side is going to factor to x plus 3 squared and the right-hand side is going to simplify to negative 2y plus 14. Here's the tricky part about example B. We actually need to identify the stretch correctly. And in that case, for that to happen, the coefficient of y also has to be positive 1. Right now, the coefficient of y is negative 2, the way we've got it on the right-hand side. So what we need to do is we actually need to factor a negative 2 out of both of those terms on the right hand side in order to get the correct stretch but also get the correct shift and so what happens is we get negative 2 times y minus 7 and then we need to move that negative 2 over to the left the stretch is always going to be on the same side as the term being squared so in this case x is what's being squared we need to move that negative 2 over to the left hand side in order to correctly identify the stretch so the final vertex form here is actually going to be negative 1 half times x plus 3 squared equaled y minus 7. That's what I want to see when you guys are writing that vertex form. The stretch needs to be with the x term because that's the term being squared. Otherwise, we look at the stretch as possibly negative 2 instead of um, a shrink, which is negative 1 half. So we're going to write that up here on the line for vertex form, negative 1 half times x plus 3 squared, and that's equal to y minus 7. And then to identify that vertex hk, again, we take the opposite sign of both. So negative 3, positive 7 is our vertex here. The axis of symmetry is always the vertical line, x is equal to, and then the x-coordinate of our vertex. And then I'm going to graph this before I actually look for those intercepts again. So let's drop some um, axes. I'm going to drop 
the y-axis a little bit to the right of my graph. And then I'm going to sit the x-axis a little higher than the last example. I'm going to scale by one again, so I don't need to make I don't need to worry about marking it on the x and y axis. And I'm going to start by graphing the vertex. So negative three, seven. Right there. OK, now what do we have? Well, we have a downward facing parabola. I know it faces down because our stretch is negative. A downward facing parabola that has a, a shrink of one half. So we're going to take all of the y values of a standard downward facing parabola and we're just going to multiply them by one half. So a standard downward facing parabola would move right one down one. We're going to move right one down a half. Standard right downward facing parabola would move right two down four. We move right two down two. We have that value. Right, we are going to go right 3 down 9 divided by 2, which is 4 and a half. And then let's see if I can fit another one. If we move right 4, we're going to go down 8 because half of 16 is 8. Okay, I think that's all I'm going to be able to fit. I'm going to reflect these points over the axis of symmetry. Now remember, you only need five points to graph a parabola and get the, a good stretch or a good indication of what the shape of the parabola is going to look like. I did a little bit more. There you go. We've got our downward facing parabola. We've got our vertex here. That was negative 3, 7. If I wanted to sketch in the axis of symmetry, it would be this dotted line here right through the middle of our parabola. I forgot to do that on the last example. Okay, and then we look. The x-intercepts, um, they don't look nice. You know, I might have misgraphed that as I was connecting the dots between the two. So we're gonna actually have to solve for those in a minute. The y-intercept we can determine. The y-intercept here is two and a half up. So our y-intercept is just zero, 2.5. Not great, but a little bit easier than the x-intercepts. So the last thing we've got to do is actually solve for those x-intercepts. Now we solve for the x-intercepts by setting y equal to 0 and solving for x. So a couple of ways you guys could do that. You could take the original equation and set y equal to 0, solve for x. Or you could take the vertex form. I'll just use the vertex form here. So negative 1 half times x plus 3 squared is equal to 0 minus 7. And then we're solving for x. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply both sides by negative 2. And that's going to leave me with x plus 3 squared is equal to 14 because negative 7 times negative 2 is positive 14. And then I'm going to take the square root of both sides in order to get the inside of that square by itself. When I take the square root of both sides, don't forget that we have to take the plus and the minus of the square root of 14. We don't know which option that is. And then the last thing I'm going to do is subtract 3 from both sides. So x is equal to negative 3 plus or minus the square root of 14. There are two numbers there. If you were to type that into your calculator, you get negative 3 plus the square root of 14. And then separately of that, negative 3 minus the square root of 14. The way that we're going to write that as the intercepts here, that's the x-coordinate of the intercept. So negative 3, you can do plus or minus root 14, that's fine. And then 0 is the y-intercept, or um, excuse me, the y-coordinate of that x-intercept. Little bit tricky, b and a are a little bit different on the equations and getting to vertex form. So just make sure you know the tricks for both of those things. We want the coefficient of x to be 1 um, before we can complete the square. And then we also, in example b, want the coefficient of y to be 1 so that we can get the stretch correct. I would like you guys to pause the video and try C. So work everything out, graph it, find those intercepts, and then just come back and check your answer in a minute. Answer for C is here. Vertex form y minus 8 is equal to negative quantity x minus 5 squared. That means you've got a downward facing parabola like we see on the graph. Um, and the vertex is 5, 8. Your axis symmetry is x is equal to 5. And then check your x and your y intercepts there. Okay, so slightly different example here. I've given you guys a graph 
and I want to know what the equation of this graph is going to look like. So I'm going to show you two different ways. I'm going to show you one that's kind of like a shortcut, and if that's something that's hard for you to kind of um, imagine, then I'll show you guys how to work it out algebraically as well. So what do we know about this graph? Looking at it, we have the vertex here. This is h and this is k. So if I start with the standard vertex form of any parabola, then I can start filling in what I know. So I know k is negative 5, so this is going to become y minus negative 5, which is just y plus 5. And then h is 1, so this on the inside is x minus 1. So the last thing we've got to identify here is that value of a, that stretch. And we're going to use the second value here. So I know from the vertex we move over 1 and up 2. So this is over 1, up 2. I'm looking at the x values to see how far we moved to the left. So to get from 1 to 0, we just moved left 1. And then negative 5 to negative 3 meant that we moved up 2. So what do we know about a standard upward facing parabola? Well, standard upward facing parabola will start at the vertex, move left one up one. In this case, we're moving left one up two. So immediately we know that our stretch here is two. It's just two times that x minus one squared. There's not a whole lot of work you need to show there if you can do it that way, if you can see that. Now, if that was hard for you to do, I'm going to go back to that last step where I had h and k already filled in. So this is y plus 5 is equal to a times x minus 1 squared. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to use that second point, not the vertex, I'm going to use that second point, 0, negative 3. And I'm going to replace everywhere where I see x and y in my equation with 0 and negative 3. That's going to give me negative 3 plus 5 is equal to a times 0 minus 1 squared. And then I'm going to solve for a. So we get 2 is equal to a times 1, or a is equal to 2 in this case. So that's where I get that 2 algebraically if I can't see that visually from the graph. Last two examples here, part e, a little bit different. I'm asking you guys to find whether the quadratic function has a maximum or minimum, and then actually evaluate the maximum or the minimum. So we can use negative b over 2a to find the x-coordinate of the vertex. This is a really important distinction. Negative b over 2a gives us h in the vertex. k we have to solve for. Let me write that out. Okay, so negative b over 2a gives us the x-coordinate of the vertex. The minimum or the maximum value, that's the function value, that's y. In this case, that's the k value in the vertex. So negative b over 2a we're going to use, but it's never going to be the maximum or the minimum. We always have to plug that into the equation to actually evaluate for the maximum and minimum. So just be careful about that. Okay, so we've got example e, 2x squared plus 12x minus 3. Just think for one minute, a is positive, which means we've got an upward facing parabola. Don't care really what else it looks like, just know that it faces upwards. That means that our vertex is down here at the very bottom, and in this example, we have a minimum. First part of the question. Okay, next I'm going to use negative b over 2a to evaluate the x-coordinate of the vertex. So in this case, negative b over 2a is negative 12 over 2 times 2, which is negative 3. That is the x value of the vertex. In order to actually get the minimum value, I'm going to plug negative 3 in where I see x, and I'm going to get the y. So this is what that's going to look like when I plug in negative 3. And then I'm just going to simplify, and you can use a calculator. Um, and that is going to get us negative 21. So our minimum value is negative 21. Last example on the page, give F a try, pause the video, come back and check your answer when you're done. F is a downward facing parabola, which means we've got a maximum and the maximum value is 25. 
All right, so make sure that you're doing your homework according to the way that we did these notes and not the way that the book is gonna ask you in the directions. Email me if you've got questions.